Well hello Year 9 and welcome to Lesson 5 and today we're going to learn all about the conventions of a tragedy. In other words, what makes a play a tragedy as opposed to a comedy? And you can see the traditional drama masks there that are laughing and crying and tragedies obviously are denoted by the first mask that is wailing. And here you've got some different productions of the tragic end scenes of Romeo and Juliet where you can see Romeo drinking the poison and Juliet stabbing herself uh, in the vault. Uh, so very atmospheric, very emotive and a tragedy, I think we can learn from these first images, is going to end in death. Now you do now tasks, I'd like you to consider which of these characters could be described as a hero. And I need you to think about why that might be. So we've got Caliban, Prospero from The Tempest, uh, Boxer from Animal Farm, Helen Burns, Jane Eyre, both from the book of that name, and of course, Oliver Twist. Are these heroes or heroines? And the next question is, are heroes always characters that have a high status or a low status? Well, the answer is, it is in fact possible to say all of these characters are heroes because most of them are good people and some of them are the main character in the story they're appearing. For example, Prospero in The Tempest or Jane Eyre in the book of that name. Now we support most of the characters and we want them to do well, but not all of these characters live happily ever after, unlike Oliver Twist. And not all of these characters are of a high status. Some are not powerful or strong, but they could still be described as a hero. Now today we're going to look at what makes a Shakespearean tragedy and what makes a Shakespearean hero or heroine, which is slightly different. And we're going to look at an essay by a Shakespearean scholar called A.C. Bradley, who was uh, who uh, was alive in the Victorian era, the latter part of the Victorian era, and his essays and lectures and books on Shakespeare have influenced the way in which people read Shakespeare. And many students will read his essays when they're studying Shakespeare at university. And this is going to help us to understand the characters, the events, and the structure of the play Romeo and Juliet. So let's read his essay together and you should find a copy of this essay in your Shakespearean booklet. There's also a Word document of this essay which I will post on SharePoint so that you've got access and show my homework to both. Now as we're going to read through you may want to highlight or underline information about the plot of tragedies, what typically happens in a tragedy, and the heroes uh, or the hero or the heroes plural of tragedies, who is in them and what do they do. So it may help if you've got a printer to obviously print this out so you can highlight and underline. Um, if you can't print out, not to worry, you either have your booklet which you can write in or you can follow this through on the slides with me. So in this lecture he says we will consider this question. What makes a Shakespearean tragedy? And to address this task, we will take examples from across his plays and we will gradually arrive at an overall idea of what is meant by the term Shakespearean tragedy. And it's worth noting that the majority of tragic heroes are men, which is why Bradley is referring to he or him. However, Romeo and Juliet has two tragic heroes, so Juliet is also a tragic hero, so the pronouns can refer to men or women. Now, as we read through, you're going to make a note of the plot of tragedies, what typically happens in a tragedy, but you're also going to look at the characteristics of the heroes of tragedies. So I'm going to leave those two bullet points at the top of each slide as we read through. So the first section relates to one character. A Shakespearean tragedy is the story of one person, the hero, or at the most of two, the hero and heroine. It's only in the plays Romeo and Juliet and Antony and Cleopatra that the heroine is as much at the centre of the action as the hero. The other tragedies, Hamlet, 
Othello, King Lear, including Macbeth, have single stars. So we may speak of the tragic story as usually being concerned with one person. So when you're making your notes, you might want to uh, note that a tragedy is the story of one person, or at the very most two, the hero and the heroine. Next, we're going to talk about death. The story next leads up to and includes the death of the hero. No play that ends with the hero remaining alive can be called a tragedy. The play ends with the hero's death. And the rest of the story depicts the troubled part of the hero's life, which leads up to his death. A Shakespearean tragedy is a tale of suffering and calamity, concluding, ending in death. So when you make your notes, again, you should be writing in full sentences, which are clear that you can obviously read easily when you come back to them. So a tragedy must end in the death of the hero, and it is a tale of suffering and disasters. Notice the plural of the disasters. And now status. Shakespeare is always concerned with pe people of high status in his tragedies. They're often kings or princes, at the least, as in Romeo and Juliet, with members of great houses whose quarrels impact on a large number of people. So again, your notes will explore the fact that tragedies are always about people of high rank or status. Think of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, Think of King Lear. Think of Othello, who is a mighty and powerful general. Now, this is a longer section, so the print is a bit smaller, but I wanted you to see the notes all in one. So we'll read through the action of the play. The calamities, the disasters of tragedy do not simply happen, and nor are they sent by some god. They occur from the character's actions. We see people placed in certain circumstances and we see certain actions. These actions lead on to others and so on until this series of actions leads to catastrophe. The effect is to make us view the sufferings of the catastrophe as something which is caused by the hero. The hero always contributes in some way to the disaster in which he or she perishes. The tragic world is a world of action we see men and women strike into the existing order of things in pursuit of their ideas. But what they achieve is not what they wanted. It is terribly unlike it. They act freely and yet their action traps them hand and foot. They lead themselves into a snare, a trap of their own creation. Everywhere in Shakespeare's tragedies, the hero wants something and he tries to get it but whatever he dreams of, he achieves that which he least dreamt of, his own destruction. So that, by way of summary, we may define tragedy thus. A tragedy is a story of human actions producing exceptional disasters and ending in the death of such a man. Now you'll notice this time that I haven't put a notes box at the bottom of the slide, but I have highlighted certain key sections of each paragraph that you may want to jot down in your own notes. And remember to make your notes as clear and legible as you possibly can. Let us now turn from the action, the what that's happening in the play, to the central figure in it, the who. And let us ask whether they have any characteristics in common which are essential to Shakespearean tragedies. One they certainly have. They are exceptional beings. We've already seen that the hero is a person of high status or of public importance, and that his actions or sufferings are of an unusual kind. But this is not all. His nature also is exceptional out of the ordinary and generally raises him in some respect much above the average level of humanity. And in almost all tragic heroes we observe a marked one-sidedness, a deadly tendency to pursue one interest, one object or one passion. This is for Shakespeare 
the fundamental, tragic characteristic. It is present in his early heroes, Romeo and Richard II. Both are infatuated, one with love, one with power. This infatuation is what makes them exceptional. And in both cases, it is what leads to their catastrophic deaths. And again, you need to make notes on the qualities of the tragic hero. Uh, and I've highlighted some of the key parts of the paragraphs to help you. So here is what your notes could look like for the plot of tragedy. The story always ends in the death of the main character. The rest of the story shows what led up to the death of the hero and the story contains suffering and usually a series of disasters, one after the other. So now I'd like you to reread the essay from the beginning and to complete your notes on what makes a tragic hero. You need to make sure that your notes are detailed and I couldn't resist, you've both got a, an etching in black and white, which is very striking, uh, from an illustration to uh, an old fashioned version of the play. And you've got, I think, probably the Roman, uh, Roman, the, the <laughs> Royal Shakespeare Company uh, or a, a previous adaptation in black and white, which again is quite striking. So hopefully you won't have needed to look at this list of qualities. But here is your checklist and you may want to go back over your notes and just check that you've got each of these bullet points down. There's usually one character, a man, but in Romeo and Juliet, the woman is just as important and both the man and woman share the title of the play. The characters are high status, they're important people. And the tragic hero acts, they try to do things, they don't sit passively letting things happen to them. But whatever they try to do, it always puts them in a worse situation. The tragic hero's actions lead to their deaths. They are exceptional people. There is something that makes them special, more than just being of high status. But what makes them so special also brings about their downfall and their tragedy. Now what I'd like you to do next, once you've checked your list of notes as to what makes up a tragic hero or heroine, I'd now like you to annotate your notes to explain how the events and the characters of the play fit these elements or conventions of a Shakespearean tragedy. So what you'll need to do, and you might want to print off just this slide, but you essentially want your notes uh, and you want enough space to be able to write around the side of the notes. And I'd like you now to pause the PowerPoint while you have a go at this task. Now, here's an example of how these notes were annotated. So uh, in this case, we've got the man and the woman are Romeo and Juliet and both suffer a terrible tragedy. Uh, in the reference to important people, we've got Montagues and Capulets are important families in Verona. Uh, when they try to do things, we've got a note that they run off and marry each other, which is extraordinary, uh, literally the day after their first meeting. But whatever they try and do, it puts them in a worse situation. Romeo gets banished and Juliet is forced to drink the potion. I won't say poison there, potion. The tragic hero's action lead to their deaths. So both Romeo and Juliet, we know, die at the end of the play. They are exceptional because they are intense and passionate and they love each other very, very deeply. So there you can see how the plot and the action of Romeo and Juliet relate to the conventions of Shakespearean tragedy. And finally, a term we can use to talk about tragic heroes is this tragic flaw. A flaw, if you like, is an error or a mistake usually. And it's an aspect of the character which makes the character special, but it also leads to their downfall. So let's look at these sentences below and see how they use the phrase tragic flaw. Boxer's faith in the farm is his tragic flaw. 
It's what makes him great, but also what leads to his death. And there you can see Nancy from Oliver Twist. Nancy's tragic flaw is her compassion. It's what makes her stand out from the criminal underworld, but also what leads to her death. And finally, we have the beautiful Juliet. Her passionate love for Romeo is her tragic flaw. It's what makes her special, but also what leads to her suicide. And so we come to the end of lesson five, and I'd like you to think about which statements about Shakespearean tragedy are correct. So you'll need to pause the video now while you have a good read of A, B, C, D, E. And then of course you can check your answer on the next slide. And there you have it, the answer is D. The tragic hero is active. They take action in the play and these actions usually lead to their deaths. So well done. I hope you've made some really clear and excellent notes. You don't need to send any of these notes into your teachers, but what you can do is to file them and put them, uh, put them into a folder and keep them so that when you come back to school, you've got your work ready and you can bring it into class with you. And I will tell you what piece of work you need to complete at the end of lesson six.